everyone um, to our fantastic live session today um, on summer flowering corms and edible flowers. We're um, focusing on that today and we're looking forward to the longer, warmer days um, full of colour and scent and pots of delicious flowers we're going to have. So we're dusting off the patio pots and uh, we're sowing seed indoors and out. And um, yeah, you know, if you've got windowsills, they're probably clogged with seedlings and uh, well, they will be after this session if you're going to uh, have a go. So uh, we hope to inspire you to have a, have, a, have a go as well. My name's Jenny Simpson. I'm the Trellis Information and Fieldwork Coordinator. And with me today are two colleagues, um, Lorna Wilson, who is Trellis Office Manager. Hi, Lorna. And Joan Wilson, who is our trainer and practical demonstrator and trellis project advisor. Hi, Joan. So, for those of you who don't know us, Trellis is the charity that supports practitioners in care, health, education, and community settings to garden with our clients. Uh, you can find more about the support we offer and links to all our training and resources online from the Trellis homepage. So, as ever, um, the aim of these sessions is to inspire you to have a go at gardening activities with your clients and we'll be giving you lots of ideas to stimulate interest and interaction and we'd also like to hear from you um, about activities and techniques that you've tried um, or questions about how to do any of this. So please use the chat to type in your questions and comments um, throughout the session. Um, and if during the question and answer discussion session at the end, um, you can raise your hand, uh, uh, use, sorry, use the raise your hand button and we can invite you to unmute and speak at that point as well. So that'll be lovely. So today's session is around 60 minutes long and there'll be a short PowerPoint presentation to set the scene. Um, then we'll have a practical demonstration and then the Q&A, as I mentioned. And near the close of the session, we'll ask you for your feedback. We'll put a link in the chat um, and uh, we'll invite you to complete our survey and um, receive our free giveaway, more of which we'll hear about later. Um, if you'd like to um, have live transcript, that's same um, subtitles, um, there's a box at the bottom of the screen and it's CC or click on the three little dots and it'll ask you if you'd like to turn on your live transcript. So please uh, use that if you find it helpful. So I'm going to start um, straight away with a, a PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to share with you. And hopefully this will um, give you some context um, to the things that we're doing today. And I'm going to show you some lovely images of lots of colorful flowers. So bear with me while I share my screen. That's great. I hope you can all see this now. Um, so it's edible flowers and summer flowering corms we're going to be talking about. And uh, just find the next slide. Hold on. So edible flowers um, have been enjoyed for over 5,000 years. We have uh, records going back to China um, 3,000 years before the uh, common era. Um, showing that um, the Chinese enjoyed eating um, flowers. And um, the, there's evidence that the Romans used roses and lavender and violets in their food. And of course, it's used, um, flowers are used today. And uh, you can see a lovely image here of a borage flower. You might have uh, encountered one of those floating in a lovely cool summer drink um, before. So these are edible flowers, borage flowers. So which flowers are edible? Well, um, here's a list of 10 common varieties that you might find um, you can grow. So there are cornflowers, dahlias, hibiscus, um, honeysuckle, that'll be one you all know, magnolias. Magnolias are coming out just now. Those are the, um, on large shrubs, which uh, don't have any leaves at the moment, but they have beautiful, lovely, big, um, flowers on just now so keep your eye open for those in the uh, gardens that you walk past. Um, there's also the nasturtium which is pictured here, very happy 
looking sunny plant, um, the pansy, uh, roses, as we mentioned before, um, scented geraniums, and Cape jasmine. And uh, Thompson and Morgan have a great um, set of web pages about edible flowers, and the link is in this um, presentation. Um, so check that out. Um, you could grow a nasturtium wigwam. Um, nasturtiums grow easily, and Joan's going to be talking about that later in her um, session. So I want you to uh, have a go at naming the flower in the next slide when I talk about it and pop your answer in the chat if you can. Um, I'm just going to talk about which other flowers are edible, some more unusual varieties, which you might not have considered, um, such as forget-me-nots, um, sunflowers, edible, uh, hollyhock is an edible one, and lilac, um, which has a lovely scent and um, you can enjoy that mixed with cream cheese or yogurt, that'd be quite interesting. Camellia as well, fuchsia, they can be eaten, gladioli, um, peonies, and alpine pinks as well. So they've got a lovely clove-like um, taste, that's um, a lovely thing. So let's see, have you have you had a guess at the flower? <sighs> type your, type your, type your, um, Answer into the chat. Oh, this isn't working for me now. For some reason, my slides are not going on. Here we go. So, did you name the flower? Yeah, all of them got it, Jenny. They have. That's wonderful. Yep. So, full marks if you got a courgette. I can see that you did. That's great. So, you can remove the male flowers from courgettes because they're the ones with no courgette forming behind it, and they can be dipped in batter and fried, which is a great delicacy in Italy. So uh, try remember that one with your courgettes. Don't, uh, don't let the flowers go to waste. So there are some flowers you shouldn't eat of course and here's a list of some which you should avoid. Daffodils, poppies, foxglove, oleander, clematis, don't eat that, bluebells, rhododendrons, larkspur, hydrangea and lily of the valley. Um, those are ones to avoid and again um, have a look at the Thompson and Morgan page for more information on that. If you're interested in toxic plants, which not for eating obviously, but just for out of interest, the um, there's a, tox a toxic garden, which sounds awful, but it's very interesting, um, at Anik Gardens, if anybody is taking a tour down um, of the in Northumberland, um, Anik Garden have a tour that they do of their um, toxic garden, which is very interesting. Anyway, going to pick the lovely, delicious flowers. Um, so always pick and choose them when pick them fresh. Uh, pick them fresh in the garden. Um, you can they taste better if you can um, pick them in the morning. Oh, sorry, gone on there. Um, and you can store them in the fridge in a plastic container and try to use them within a few days. So. Um, if you're in any doubt whatsoever as to whether a flower is edible, don't eat it. If you have pollen allergies, um, avoid eating edible flowers um, as they will have some pollen on them. Um, don't pick faded or dusty or old or discoloured flowers from your garden when foraging or those that are near a road or in an area that animals use because you don't want any contamination from cars or animals. Um, don't treat your edible flowers with pesticides. You know, if you have a problem with pests, cut the um, cut the flowers back, cut the growth back, and encourage regrowth instead. So prepare your uh, lovely flowers. Wash and dry them gently by dipping them in a bowl of water and giving them a little shake. And um, the petals are the bit that you're going to be eating. Um, so remove the heel at the base of the petals because it's a bit bitter. That's the bit at the bottom behind the petal and rem remove the stamens and the pistil um, from larger flowers so that's the bit that sticks out this um, picture of a hibiscus illustrates it so you remove that part that's um, sticking out but some um, plants like pansies and violas you can eat them whole you don't have to remove any again there's more information online about that and what can you use them for well how about making some showstopper cakes 
Um, you, it's easy to put fresh flowers into soft, press them into soft icing, and you can get loads of information on online about how to decorate and what to do with your flowers. Uh, you can try them on cupcakes. These are lovely um, a little to these. They're not. Uh, I think they're sort of pinks. They're the ones with lovely flavour, and some pansies and violas as well, and raspberries and all sorts of things. Delicious. And you can also preserve um, the petals and you can uh, do that by preserving them with egg white and uh, sugar. So you just beat an egg white with a teaspoonful of water and then you have to use a little brush to coat the surface of the petals. That would be a lovely activity to do actually, I think it would be very nice to sit and um, paint them. Uh, you could do that really mindfully. Um, and then you sprinkle generously with castor sugar and then you lay them out to dry. Um, overnight or until they're all dry and then if you store them in an airtight container um, and then you can use them to decorate uh, and eat at a later stage. You can also use them as savoury dishes. Uh, this one is Provencal stuffed apricots and goat cheese salad with edible flowers. So um, looks delicious and why not um, put them in ice cubes or ice lollies? They look very colourful and lovely. Um, so have a go at that. It's a lovely uh, photograph there from Funny How Flowers Do That. And of course, um, cocktails and mocktails. Loads of ideas online. This is a mixed berry lemonade sparkler, which just looks terrific. You can just imagine sitting out on a lovely warm afternoon with that one. Lots of ideas for you to try out with your edible flowers. So I'm going to just chat briefly about summer flowering corms. Um, they're not necessarily edible, these ones, but we I did want to touch on corms because it's an unusual word and uh, it's not one that we, we, we use every day. You know, we're used to um, thinking about seeds and bulbs. So you're thinking, oh, what's a corm? Um, well, a corm is, um, it's a bit like a, it's a bit like a bulb, but it's a bit more like a tuber, which is a bit more like a potato. It's um, something that if you cut it, if you cut through it, it would be more solid than a bulb. A bulb's got lots of layers in it. It looks like an onion when you cut it up. But um, the um, the corm is something a bit a bit um, more solid than that. So they are in large stems in which food is stored, and they have a thing called a basal plate, which is the bit at the bottom which you plant downwards, and then they have a tunic and a growing point, which I think sounds rather sweet. <laughs> Sounds like they've got a nice little jacket on. And uh, you can see in this picture, it's a bit blurry, I'm afraid, but it's difficult to get photos of corms. But these ones are gladioli corms, and you can see the growing point that it's pointing upwards um, uh, in this uh, pot uh, as they're being planted here. And um, many corms are of very interesting shapes and textures, and Joan will show you a bit more um, in her part of the day. Um, so summer flowering plants uh, from corms can be very beautiful. Um, this is uh, a gladioli. You can have uh, ranunculus, liliums, freesias, crocosmias, cyclamen, anemones, autumn crocus, oxalis and bananas. I was delighted to find <laughs> grow from corms. <laughs> so lots of variety there um, that you could have a go with. And, um, try your luck with some of these summer flowering plants. So um, we're going to also going to be talking about summer flowers from seed today and Joan's got um, her top four, so I'm just going to show photos of them. Uh, top four, um, starting with Cosmos here, um, which is a good doer and it likes um, poor growing conditions, so it's easy to grow, you don't have to feed it a lot. It's got paper-like flowers on tall, slender stems, comes in a variety of heights, um, tall and short, that add interest to the patio, and in different colours too. And it's very attractive to butterflies and bees, which is great, because you want to invite them into your garden to do all sorts of good um, pollinating plants and uh, doing good things for wildlife. Um, the next one is calendula, which uh, is also very easy to grow. And the more you cut the blooms, the more uh, flowers the plant will make. 
it's very robust um, and it's nice and visible so it's a good one to grow it's nice and it kind of shines out because of its lovely yellow and orange colors um, bees uh, and insects love it too and um, it's it's also edible has the benefit of being edible we're also going to talk about uh, sunflowers today this is um Joan would recommend a dwarf or bush variety um, because it's easy to grow. You don't have to stake it up. It's not these big, it's not one that you would grow in a competition for a tall sunflower. It's a short bushy variety and uh, grows in any type of soil and it grows particularly well in containers. So if you've got a container garden, you want to grow it on the patio or the doorstep, it's an ideal one. And um, everybody likes a sunny sunflower, don't they? Uh, and so do the bees and insects, not just the people. And also the bees and insects like to pollinate and the birds like to eat the um, seeds uh, in the autumn time um, from the centre of the sunflowers. And last but not least is the zinnia, which is a delightful flower um, and it's ideal for first time growers. Um, it's very quick and it flowers really reliably. It's available in lots of colours and um, it's great for cutting and bringing indoors and uh, they, they grow in very long stems so they're ideal for cutting and uh, growing. Loved by butterflies, so another boost to um, our insects and it's very popular, so a lovely one to grow there. So that's all my lovely pictures of flowers. I'd just like to bring to your attention um, this um, grant that we've heard of this week, which is called the Dandelion Harvest Grant. Um, and it's now open for applications. And you can get grants of up to £2,000 for community groups and non-profit organisations who are looking to get started with growing their own food and celebrating the results with a harvest festival in September. And um, those are the links there for that and um, we'll post them out to you um, as well in an email after the event. We'll put this up so that you can get that. But um, if you are growing, you can uh, apply and if you're wanting to start to grow, then you can apply too. So it might be very useful to some of you. OK, well, I think that's all I've got to share with you just now. I'm going to come out of that and hand over to Joan. Great, thank you. Well, thanks, Jenny, for showing lots of lovely, lively and very colourful images, whetting our appetite for flower growing, um, because this time of year can be a tricky time to support clients to engage in gardening activities as the weather is so on the top of the window here. It is reliably unpredictable. I think I've, I've not had winter today. I've definitely had autumn. I started off the summer, uh, jumped to autumn, went back to spring, and it's a wee bit murky out there, so goodness only knows what's going to happen. But good news is that the sowing of seeds of both edible flowers and flowers for cutting and displaying in vases or jam jars makes for a great tabletop activity to be getting on with just now during April and into May time. And as the socialite fashion designer Lily Palitza said, despite the forecast, live like it's spring. So that's what I'm going to do today, is go and get seed sowing. Now, seed sowing is sowing hope and growing anticipation for the brighter summer months. But we do know it's just around the corner. It doesn't feel like it, but we do know it's going to happen. It's planning for the future, and while we look forward to the edible flowers to garnish our garden drinks, like Jenny was showing in her PowerPoint presentation, and fresh flowers to bring indoors, we're also encouraging light physical activity, maintaining coordination, fine motor and cognitive skills. And for many, this around the table activity supports our all important social engagement and inclusion. Now, before I head over to my table to demo some activity, I'm going to share a short video that um, shows some sewing of seeds that I've already been doing that will, I'll grow on and I'll use for cutting and um, using in vases over the summer time. So I'll just share this just now. And here we go. Growing flowers for cutting isn't tricky at all. 
and certainly saves on cash and on thousands of air miles. Many of the easy to grow flowers have decent sized seeds to handle and these seeds are easily sourced in supermarkets and garden centres. Flower growing might have been a favourite pastime and one that we can easily rekindle. Make a tabletop activity out of seed sowing in early spring and germinate the seeds in a, on a warm windowsill or sow directly into a larger outdoor pot and grow outdoors from May. So we need some compost, seed trays, or perhaps recycle some fruit boxes, a spoon to scoop with, pen and labels, a small watering can or bottle, and of course, your choice of seeds. I'm sowing a bush variety of sunflower that makes short stems of flowers, ideal for using in vases. So break up any lumpy bits of compost and use a bedding plant section from last year or a yogurt pot with drainage holes pierced in it. Fill the container about four fifths full, then level off the compost. Pop one sunflower seed into each wee box or yogurt pot and press the seed about one centimetre down into the compost. Level the compost flat again and label the containers with the plant name and today's date. Then water well with a small watering can or watering bottle. Set the seed container into a tray and set on a bright warm windowsill. And keep the compost moist, but not soggy, and water into the tray from now on. Seedlings will germinate, that sprout through the compost in 7 to 10 days. And some flowers have much smaller seeds, and several can be scattered over the compost layer, then covered over with a fine layer of compost before watering. And don't fret, as different flower seeds all germinate at different times, so be patient. And a plastic box is a great way of storing seed containers and can be sat at a patio door and moved around when needed. And once the seedlings have four to six leaves on their wee stems, start to harden them off. That's getting them used to outdoors temperatures and living outdoors, but only do this if it's not frosty. Now, seed sowing might prove too tricky, so try growing flowers from tubers, which are like small bulbs and could be easier to handle. Plant the wee tubers directly into a patio pot of compost, following the great information given on the tubers packaging. Keep them well watered and they'll soon peek through. And bulk out with lush foliage. and then the colourful blooms will appear. These tubers will die down for winter time, but will regrow the following spring. Or how about growing a larger cutting area? You might have an empty raised bed or a bit of a bare, board, bare border somewhere. Use canes to mark out zones to plant a variety of flowering tubers and seedlings into. Water well and watch them grow. Feeding with plant food will help make plenty of healthy stems, which in turn will give you plenty of flowers to cut for your vases. And picking the flowers regularly will encourage the plant to keep on flowering also. And fill wee jam jars of your own homegrown flowers to enjoy yourself or to share with others. Lovely, Joan. Thank you.
Right, well, that was all sort of like a, a bit of a quick introduction um, to what I'm about to lead on to from here. But I just want to show you um, these were the zinnia that um, Jenny was speaking about in her PowerPoint presentation. I've just thrown some more seed for them because I do like my zinnia. And that's, um, that's the seeds just um, germinating now and little seedlings are just appearing. So they're staying indoors, it's still far too unpredictable, the weather, and they are cast a clue till the maize out and all that. So my babies will not be going outside um, overnight for a long time yet, I don't think. Rudbeckia, this is another good one. Um, it didn't make my top four, but it would probably be number five. Um, the Rudbeckia is it's getting flung outside every day um, and it's actually needing potted on. And I'm going to put some things on in a little minute, so I'll demo, demo that in a second. Um, the video that we've just watched showed me sowing a uh, sunflower seed into the little sections. And this is now the sunflower and um, little dwarf ones that we were talking about. Um, this is them turned into little seedlings. And out of my 10, I've actually done very well. I've got 11. Um, I've obviously dropped two seeds in here. I've not been paying attention. So 11 out of 10 seeds is pretty good going if you ask me. So, if the weather was a wee bit kinder, I could plant these out uh, directly into the ground, into prepared soil, just by digging it over. And sunflowers will grow literally anywhere, so don't worry about um, soil conditions too much. But I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to pot these into a little pot, um, which might be a, a good way of sharing. Um, if you sow a whole packet, you might have 50 sunflowers that you can then have a tabletop activity for a whole day, potting them on and giving them away as gifts. Or um, maybe you've got a big long fence that you could um, plant the sunflowers into. So what I have is some, this is a seedling compost, which um, is readily available in the garden centres. So you should be able to get that okay. Um, just give it a wee rumble roundabout, break up any clumpy bits because as much as my seedlings look nice and happy and healthy, they're still babies and their little roots are quite delicate and they need to be able to work their way through the, the compost easily. I've got two pot sizes here. Um, I'll talk about them in two seconds once I get my seedling out. To get your seedling out, avoid holding it by the stem. If you accidentally snap the stem, the entire plant will die. If you can hold by a leaf, that's easier. Uh, that's better, I should say, because if we snap the leaf, it's got plenty of other leaves there and it will constantly make new leaves anyway, but it's only got the one stem. So I'm just going to hold the top part with my fingers and I'm squeezing the bottom of this section and then out pops the root ball. And this is what I'm going to be planting into these pots. Now, it would fit in here quite happily, if you can see, oops, if you can see that okay. It will yeah. fit in here quite the thing, but it doesn't have that much space for it to grow. And we do know that this plant is going to grow into a big bushy, not a big tall sunflower, but a big bushy one. So I want to give it space to grow and have this lovely little root system develop fully before I potentially put it into a bigger patio pot again. So I'm just going to fill this up, give it a sugar to knock out any excess hair, eh, hair, excess air even. And I've just made a little indentation with my fingers. And I'm just going to pop that little root ball in there and fill gently round about. You could use a spoon to do this if your clients weren't um, comfortable with using their hands. And I'm just filling the compost up to the level that the wee plant was growing at the level of compost in its little box here. Now 
sunflowers, there's no frost forecasting out, so these plants can actually stay outside tonight because these are quite hardy little plants. They're not frost hardy, but they're hardy for cool nights. So I'll go outside because I'm absolutely running out of windowsill space indoors. I've already labelled, um, written my label with my pen, um, pen onto my label, tell me the variety and today's date so I can keep tracks on how, how well my plants are doing. So that's my sunflower ready to um, go outside, but it will grow into a bigger, bushier plant. I'm hoping that this one plant will eventually cover the area of this uh, potting um, bench that I'm working in. So it will get potted onto a bigger pot again, but I don't want to over pot it just now. I don't want to put this one little plant into a huge big pot because that's not good for it either. There's far too many nutrients available to it in the compost. There's too much water can gather in the compost and the wee plant would just be overcome um, and it would probably fail. So it's best to pot them up slowly, a pot size at a time. So there we have those ones. The other um, plants that I was growing in the video, um, I talked about the cosmos. I just love cosmos as well. And this is um, fizzy white. I've not grown fizzy white before, so I just love the look of its wee crinkly petals on its leaves. And these are um, cosmos seeds, seedlings. These seeds were sown um, for that video that I made. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to pot them on into this big, bigger pot that I will put out onto my patio. Again, during the day just now is fine because the weather is fairly okay during the day, but I'll certainly bring them back inside into my hut or into my garage at night time if I think there's going to be any frost um, going about. And if they're in the garage, I'll always cover them with a light covering of horticultural fleece, which increases the temperature by one or two degrees, which can make all the difference to a wee dinky plant like this. So this is just a, a big general purpose a garden centre pot. They're relatively relatively inexpensive um, and they last for absolutely years so I don't mind buying plastic if I'm going to get lots and lots of use out of it. Um, so like my sunflower um, we can see all the lovely roots belonging to these seedlings coming out the bottom so they're screaming at me get me out of here um, I need more space. Um, again don't hold on to the stem hold on to the, the leaves and if we look closely enough, we might be able to see the different shapes of leaf. We've got the first set down the bottom here, which are known as the seed leaves. And um, they're the first leaves that are produced by the seed growing into a seedling. And then it starts to make its true leaves. The true leaves are the leaves that everybody would recognise as this plant. Lots of um, seedling leaves look the same. So you can see the contrast. So I've got about one, two, three. I've got three sets of true leaves here. So really these plants are ready to be potted on. So I'm going to catch my leaves at one end and I'm going to squash the bottom of the pot. And yep, there we go. Comes out quite the thing. And I have got a, a tangled, um, I was going to call it a mess. It's not a mess. A beautiful tangle of roots here which shows me they're nice and healthy. Now I'm just going to gently tear the root ball apart. And there we go. I'll put those ones there just to make them away. And I'll just keep tearing. One. Quite a satisfying noise to. There we go. This is me got my three plants. Sorry, four plants even. I just set them down there. Now I'm going to plant them in here. I'm going to plant the four of them in here, and there'll be enough space in here, and they'll grow up to these ones grow about two to three feet. So I'm going to use a pen. So you can buy dibbers out of the garden centre, but I'm just going to um use a pencil and if you can see I've just inserted this into the compost, general purpose compost 
I've got in here not seedling compost and I've got my lovely little roots attached at the bottom and I'm holding by the leaf and I'm just going to pop the root into the little hole, cover it over and then using my four fingers, four fingers, you know what I mean, um, I'm just going to firm it in round about and that's that little plant in. Next one, gosh, it's got a big chunky root on it. So I'll give it a slightly bigger hole to get dropped into. Same thing, squash it round about, firm it in. And the next one. Now, as I said, um, this plant will probably grow about two, maybe three feet. I need to check the the back of the package to remind me in case I'm getting mixed up with another variety that I'm growing. But they're going to grow tall, how about that? Um, so I'm concerned that because they're on quite tall slender stems that I get quite a wee bit of wind round about my patio. So I'm going to make sure that these little plants grow up, are supported to grow up nice and tall. Oh, I've got another label already printed. Today's date and the plant name on it, so I don't forget what they are, or when somebody comes to visit, they can see for themselves what it is. What I'm going to do is I've got some canes here. Again, these canes are readily available at garden centres or nurseries, and even some of the supermarkets, the bigger supermarkets in their seasonal aisle, um, have got this um, all these bits and bobs in them just now. So I've put the canes round about the, the side, just slid them down the side of the, the pot here to make my frame. And then this is just um, garden twine, but any sort of string would do. Or perhaps you've got lots of ribbon left over from Easter crafts or Christmas presents, who knows? Um, anything that's going to create a, a cage sort of a macrame of material. So this is where I'm not sure how much of this you can see, Jenny. No, we can see we can see it fine. Okay, good, good. show. So I'm just going to wiggle round and I'm conscious I don't want to spend too much time doing this. Um, but you'll get the idea. So I'll just go very, very quickly round with this one. Twisting as I go to keep it taut. And now's the time to do it when the plants are tiny. If you wait until they've started to grow and start to get floppy, you just get in a tangle and you need about three pairs of hands to do it, which isn't so much good fun. Um, and then cut that off, tie it into a knot, and that's you've got a nice structure that the plants can now grow up and be supported as they grow and you'll get to see the lovely flowers. So, that's the cosmos. Um, there's other plants that you saw in there and lots of them do grow tall like that. And if you are seed sowing, once you're at the, the stage that these ones are at, you can plant them directly into prepared ground in the border or keep them on the patio because we do, we do take more notice of something if it's right beside us and having to walk down over the wet grass to get to admire them. So patio growing is the way to go. So, now for some edible flower growing. As Jenny says, there are many plants that have edible flowers. Vegetables and herbs such as runner beans, courgettes, as we saw in the um, presentation. Um, and then ornamental plants such as the nasturtiums and lavender, again, that, that Jenny showed us loads of pictures of. But remember, as Jenny said, please be aware that some flowers are toxic. So if you're unsure, don't eat it. It's as simple as that. Um, but I'm going to show four edible flowering plants. And the first one that I'm going to show is the nasturtium. Um, these are some that have been growing for a good few weeks now. And in the chat before I came over, I noticed somebody asking, um, are edible flowers, edible flower plants, leaves edible? Some are and some are not. Again, make sure and check before you just dive in there. But nasturtiums are one that are edible. The flowers um, 
and the leaves are all edible and they've got a kind of um, peppery rocket like taste and um, which is great for tantalizing you know tired taste buds and um, so this is a packet of um nasturtium seeds here and you can maybe see that they're a fairly decent size and most folks would be able to um, handle them fairly comfortably Again, a little nine centimetre pot, and you can use a spoon to scoop with. Somebody was quite comfortable doing that. Again, I'm whizzing through this at 100 miles per hour, but this is a lovely relaxed activity, or it should be. And take your time to do it and enjoy all the, the stages of it, even just like picking up the spoon and tapping in the compost leveling the compost and just watch how it settles down that's quite incredible it also amazes me how many times i tap that i still get more air out of it you'll see that i've only filled the compost up to about a centimeter below the rim of the, the pot and the reason for that is if i put any more compost in when i come to water it the compost will all just eat over the side along with the water so the water doesn't actually go down to the roots of the plants so always leave a space in there to water into and then the water will percolate down through the compost and if there's any excess it'll find its own way out through the, the drainage holes at the bottom so i've got my compost in there and i'm going to pop two nasturtium seeds in here one two and just quite literally I want to plant them about a centimetre down into the compost so about a nail depth down cover them over I've pre-written my label with the name and the date pop my label in so I remember what they are while they're germinating and give them a good drink of water and as you can see I can give them a great drink of water and it doesn't get all over the side and all is well and then I'll set this on a little tree and from now on when I'm watering I'm going to water into this tree and the water the compost will absorb the water up from the bottom and that encourages the developing germinating seed to send its roots downwards while it's sending its little stem upwards. So that's your that's the nasturtiums. Oh no I was going to show you something else. Um, where have I put it? Jenny showed a picture of a nasturtium wigwam. Now it's so easy to do and it's so effective. Again, same pot as before. This is a 15 litre pot if you actually want to know the size of it. General purpose compost. And I'm going to slide in three canes. Now you'll not see this bit, Jenny. But I'm basically tying the canes together with a piece of string up at the top to create a wigwam effect. Now nasturtiums don't actually tie themselves onto canes the way likes of um, a clematis or a honeysuckle does but they do kind of do that sprawliness and a support like this actually helps them stay upright. Now I've just tied the top of my canes now I've got a little plant pot here but a yogurt pot would do the same. I'm going to pop that on top of the three canes that are tied together because I have had a cane in the eye before and it's not pleasant and I don't want anybody else to, to have the same accident. Um, so if you cover the canes, then it, it, it saves an accident from happening. So I've now got my nasturtiums back that I thought was finished with. I put the canes in first of all because I don't want to... Um, put the plants and then put the canes in because the canes might damage the roots of the plant. Same as before, squeeze the bottom of the plastic. Oops, out they come. And I've got two here, and I'm just going to plant each one, one beside each cane. I'm just going to use my fingers to make a little hole, fragile. It's a wee bit fragile looking, that root ball. Same with this one. Firm it in. 
and I'll finish doing the rest of that later on. Another one in here and give it a good water. I'm going to set this outside again because there's no frost forecast for tonight. The insertions will be fine outdoors. Give it a good water, raise the pot off the ground, set it onto little stones or little blocks. And that means any excess water always escapes and the wee plants won't drown in water. Okay, so discussions. Next up is the calendula. Um, I have got calendula. These, this was calendula seeds that I sowed on the 6th of April and somebody can tell me how many days ago that was. That must be just over a week or something or yeah, over a week ago. So you can see how quickly the calendula have um, germinated. Um, far too delicate to be grown outside because it's too, although it's not frosty, it's still too cool for them. But they're doing fine. And then these are calendula seedlings that were sowed um, oh, six weeks ago, so they were, no, five weeks ago. Um, and by looking at the bottom, we can see all the little white roots. Again, a bit like the cosmos, they're shouting at me, they're screaming at me to get out and get potted on. So these are going to get potted into a pot the same as what I did with the cosmos later on. I want to show you the calendula seeds though. Um, these are my plants that I think are cheeriness personified in a plant. Um, the flowers only are edible, these leaves are not edible. And they're really great, they're really pretty, and they make a striking addition to the likes of salads, curries, paellas, or you could dry the petals and use as a substitute for saffron in cooking. Now, the seeds are really quirky, I think. They're like little wood shavings, Oops. Oh, well, that's going to be a surprise calendula from here. Um, I don't know if you can see them, but they're like little wood shavings. And I think even just handling seeds is a lovely activity to engage some clients in. Just touching, handling, what does this remind us of? Um, oops, a really, really interesting activity in itself. I'm trying to mix my seeds up there. So these are my calendula seeds. Now I'm just going to pour um, so quickly uh, these seeds into this. It's a great box, or maybe a tomato box, I don't know. Anyway, it's got drainage holes at the bottom, which is ideal. Um, and it came with some type of food, so I'm just repurposing it. Compost into the tray. Give it a tap, settle it down to knock out any excess air. And then I'm just going to quite literally wiggle these seeds over the compost, like so. Label plant name and today's date, pop it in. Oops. Cover very lightly with a fine layer of compost. Roughly speaking, when you're sowing seeds, corms, bulbs, whatever, you're planting the item, the seed or the bulb, three times the depth of its own self. So those are paper thin, those shavings. Hence, I'm just putting three times paper thin covering of compost on top. Setting it all down, giving it a good drink of water, And again, setting it into a dish that's got no drainage holes at the bottom of it. And from now on, I'm going to water into this uh, tree and the compost will absorb the water. So that's your calendula. Scottish marigold is another uh, name for calendula if you're looking for them in the uh, garden centres. You can buy calendulas out of supermarkets and bunches. But just be aware that you don't know where those cut flowers have came from. And when I say we don't know where they came from, we don't know if they've been sprayed with any type of bug, color, uh, bug killer. So always ensure that if you're going to pick a plant to eat, you know exactly how it's been looked after. Okay, next up is um, 
the borage. Now, that was the first bee plant that Jenny showed in her PowerPoint presentation, the wee dinky blue um, flower. And as the packet shows, bumblebees and honeybees love borage as well. And borage is known as the plant, as the plant world's equivalent of beauty and the brains. Beauty, due to its exquisite true blue, and I love a true blue flower, dinky flower, that are the perfect size for serving up as ice encased delicacies at your garden party and um, celebrating the equinox or whatever. Mind you, the equinox is in the spring, though. You know, right, longest day. And the brains part of it as well, that's because we can use the leaves to make an excellent organic liquid plant food. And once the plant fully dies off during autumn time and we've collected all the flowers we want to from it, it can be dug directly into a uh, border soil where the dying material from the stems and the leaves will release nutrients slowly into the soil and its chunky fibrous root system will help aerate the soil, helping with drainage throughout the winter time also. So, seeds make a great noise because they're quite circular and they're kind of like, I don't know, a petrol blue colour. They're quite unusual as well when you look at them up closer. Um, they're much smaller, but maybe okay for, for quite a few clients to be able to handle. So I put them in a, a wee tub that's got a contrasting colour, which helps people see them to pick them out. Now, these are little pots that I got off of a whole load of succulents, something like that. I keep everything. Um, and I've still got the tray that they came in, which is handy. So perhaps this could be a conveyor belt activity for folks to, to get involved in. And using small pots means that the job can be done fairly quickly. So maybe two heap teaspoons, no, three, yeah, three teaspoons into each one. That uh, can be the instructions. Some folks might be a bit anxious about having to work out themselves how much to put in. But if we can demonstrate and show, we put three in each one, they might be quite happy to work their way through the task set of them and be part of the, the end result. So I'm just giving it a wee sugar, like so. I'm going to pop them into my hand. I'm just going to put one In each little pot, like so. Same as before, I'm just going to give it a light covering of some more compost. Use the back of my spoon just to flatten it down to make good contact with the compost. Label, you'll be fed up here, Missy. Label and Another good drink of water. Now there's loads of seeds in, in a packet of borage and you really only need a couple of plants in your own garden because they produce loads of flowers and the more you pick the flowers, the more the plant will want to make more flowers for you. So sow them into little pots so you've got space to store them. And once they're up to about that height, they're ready to give away to lots of friends. So share the Share the love of ice cube, ice cube making with lots of other people. And look at the time, Jenny, it's just running away. <laughs> One last thing I want to show you is okay. my courgette. Um, right. Sorry, yes, of course, <laughs> we, we had that in the, the picture. Um, uh, if you've never grown a courgette or a pumpkin, you must just do it for the sake of doing it. And once you've done it, you'll grow them every year after it because the flowers are really are so interesting to watch unfurl. And they're just these massive big trumpet ones. And the best thing about pumpkin growing is you, you really don't need a lot of care over the summertime. Um, mine's relatively thrive on neglect and I'm always surprised at how many pumpkins they give me at the end of September, October time. Definitely worth having a, uh, having a go at. Um, now courgette seeds and pumpkin seeds, these are courgettes, uh, but pumpkin seeds are very similar. They're nice and chunky, they're quite like a sunflower seed, um, lots to, to grip onto there. 
So I'm just going to quickly sew one courgette for you. Courgettes must not get roasted. They are so delicate and they can be quite tricky to germinate. So make sure and only sew them out directly outside if you know all chance of frost has passed or just sew them indoors on the windowsill. Now we've got a flat side and a skinny side. Push them in skinny side and that saves any water from gathering on the surface of the flat side. Just pop it in again, good centimetre down in, cover it over, label it, drink of water. Now you could tie a plastic bag around it with an elastic band to hold it in place to make a little mini greenhouse. That can help with germination, but I find mine's germinate fine on a on my living room windowsill. It's quite sunny through there and they seem to do fine. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. And then our courgette will germinate. And this was one, gosh, this was done on the 25th of February. So, that, so this has been growing for a while. We can see the true leaves that are a different shape to these um, seedling leaves. And we've got one, two full sets coming on here now. and. Again, we can just see roots just starting to come out slightly. I'm going to pot this courgette into the big container that it's going to grow in all summer. So I don't want a massive big container. This is as big as I would pot into. A, because I don't have the space in the patio for anything bigger. And B, it doesn't need any more space because I'll start to feed it once it starts to make its courgettes and flowers later on. This is actually an old hanging basket. Um, it's already got the draining, draining shoals in it, but I've taken the chains off of it. And what I have here is, I'm just going to very quickly fill this with some compost. I've already broken up most of these ones, so I'm hoping that that, yeah, it feels fairly okay. Now what we could do is, I filled this just a wee bit too much, is wiggle it, the pot down to the height that we want the, the courgette to be planted at. Now it's a wee bit lower than in here and this little pot is growing in. I'm just going to pop that in there and I'm going to put my compost round about, maybe a little bit more just to bring it up to level. Pull my label out, pop it back on the side there. Same as before, I'm not going to hold the stem, I don't want to snap it. Wiggle it out. Lovely little root system here. Looks great. And it will now just slot perfectly back into the little hose came out of. And that saves trying to pack, hold it and pack compost round about it. Firm it in gently. I'm going to take it outside and give it a drink of water outside, but the courgette will definitely come back inside tonight because they really do not like cool when uh, cool evenings at all. And that's your courgette. Um, as Jenny said, um, pick the male flowers because they don't make any fruits, um, but try and leave a couple of the male ones on um, because we need them for um, pollination. Okay, that's me finished, Jenny. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Joan. That's wonderful. Um, loads and loads and loads of beautiful and delicious flowers there. And um, we're all going to be very busy and um, that's terrific. I'm just going to um, take the spotlight off this one. And I'm going to spotlight you, Joan, just back at your tabletop there for a minute. Oh, what's happened? No, here we go. There we go. Um, so um, some there are some questions in the chat. Um, um, the first one was um, about sweet pea flowers. Are they edible? And um, I don't think they are. Um, I would check it out online, but I think um, our 
um, I think it would have said so already in that uh, PowerPoint about sweet peas if, it, uh, if they had been edible. So I don't think they are. I think they're beautifully perfumed, but I don't think they're edible. So, but check that out online um, before you go away and um, eat anything like that. Um, there's a question there asking what kind of bottle top uh, waterer that we're using. Um, I think those were the ones that we got from, was it Sea Spray, Joan? Uh, Garden Innovations. Garden Innovations. In Garden Innovations. But they're readily available online, but we buy ours from Garden Innovations anyway. Yeah. That's great. Okay. And uh, they're not, they're inexpensive, but they, they do work very well um, on, I don't know if you find, I find they're not so good on uh, water bottles. These water bottles, but if oh, it's a, right. like a juice bottle, it seems to yeah. screw on better to that. I don't know what kind you've got. Yeah, well, um, I've had mine, but I can tell you it's a Diet Coke bottle. That's Diet Coke, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, And it's uh -huh. had it for absolutely donkeys. It's <laughs> oh, no. the, I should get yeah. money from Diet Coke for promoting <laughs> the longevity of their plastic. <laughs> That's it, yeah. So it works well. If you want to use those uh, bottle top waters, try a juice, a juice bottle rather than a, a, an old water bottle. Um, they, they screw on better. Um, but you can make one from just from the top of a bottle, punching holes in the top of a bottle if you use a something hot, a hot nail or something I think people use. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it myself, but uh, we can try that. Uh, someone, Susan's asking, which way up to plant courgette seeds? Is there, a, is there an up or a down with a courgette seed? No, um, don't worry about it. There's a little hole on the casing of the the seed that that lets the water in but the water that you're putting in will soon find that little hole and the seedling is far more clever than you and I put together and it will soon send its roots down the way and it's we shoot up the way. Fabulous okay if anyone else has got a question would they like to use their raise your, raise your hand and um, we can ask you to unmute and ask your question. We're over running slightly by four minutes. We, we didn't start, to be fair, we didn't start till after two. <laughs> so we've got a couple of minutes in spare. Uh, has anyone got a question there that they'd like to, to ask? Because we've had so much to do, it was terrific. Um, loads and loads of flowers and also lots of great adaptive tips um, there. Um, you know, from using contrast colour containers to trying a conveyor belt set up to spoons and hands and, you know, using your fingers to judge the depth of where to put your seed. So uh, terrific, that's fantastic. And also sharing your seedlings, absolutely excellent for um, your well-being. Mandy, would you like to unmute and yeah. ask a question? Have I unmuted? I think you so. Are. <laughs> I was just thinking, I've got um, a little bit of therapeutic gardening work, which is a bit new to me, having come from social work, but it's in a hostel. So I won't be able, to, I'll only be doing like, you know, occasional sessions. I won't be able to do that daily backwards and forwards that a lot of us know so well for hardening off our seedlings. So would you suggest just going for planting seeds in May that can just go straight into tubs outside and not, I mean, it'll be May before I start this year anyway. So I was thinking I would just do, nastur do nasturtiums and stuff that can go straight in. Whereabouts are you base? Which Edinburgh. Edinburgh, okay. Um, nasturtiums in May will be absolutely fine. Um, and if you're not starting until May, then we don't really have to worry about the rest of April. But it might be quite, if each of, if your clients that you're working with have got a bedroom window, it would surprise you how many plants would probably survive. I was, I was thinking I might do, um, you know, like a sort of sample thing like growing a bean, but it's, temporary accommodation so some people will be there for a while other people might not be so i'm not quite How about they won't something? be able to do a whole tray and you know do in and out but you're right i could think of something that could just be on a on a windowsill to be what like a sunflower would work yeah. wouldn't it or how about pea shoots because they'll yeah. germinate within days and they'll be able to eat them within well 10 days perhaps yeah, depending that's true. on the weather so they'll get that quick turnaround and you know um yeah so it'd be nice know. to be able to watch something coming up on the windowsill 
rather than... And of course, than, like, we're yeah. assuming or we're hopeful that when they move from the hostel, they're going into some other type of accommodation. So to yeah. take a little plant with them, make, yeah. just make sure and choose, give them a poly bag to put the little plant in to take with them. Right. I'll read your plastic free gardening book and try and keep it keep it down. <laughs> but sometimes plastic is good. Thank oh, if you you've can. got it, you've got to use it. Don't don't discard it just because it's plastic. Yeah, Make sure quite right. Use it it's, for its it's the reusing, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mandy. Has anyone else got a quick a quick question they'd like to to put to us at all? Please just raise your hand and I will ask you to unmute. No, I think that might be all for today. Um, I think we've captured everything that everyone was asking um, from Sweet Leaf, Sweet Peas. Um, a question I wanted to ask Joan, pumpkins, can you grow them in a pot or do you need to put them sort of on some bigger, something bigger? <laughs> can it I be a big pot? The, the low uh, hanging basket thing that yeah. I put that pumpkin into. Uh -huh. I, I grow a pumpkin in one of them as well so it, because it's really sprawly yeah, um, yeah. and I tend to put it somewhere out the way because it sprawls all over the place. Uh -huh. um, so no, it doesn't need a, it doesn't need a lot of space for its actual root. Roots, um, right. Uh -huh. it's, it's just, just the plant, the plant just grows. And what I'm going to try this year as an experiment is I'm going to have it growing up a wall, up a net, so oh. that it sprawls up the wall. Uh -huh. And not all over the ground right. where the leaves and debris gets sound messy, doesn't it? But you know uh, what I mean, like it. Yeah, it gets um, caught underneath it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to. That's an experiment for me this year. So watch this. Yes. It sounds exciting. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much to Joan um, for a demonstration and video today. And thank you very much to Lorna for your technical help. And um, we look forward to seeing you at future sessions. Please register online. And um, we've got um, the growing series Growing Fruit on the 5th of May. And we've got live Zoom hanging baskets on the 26th of May. So lo lots to look out for. Um, and um, we're going to post the link to the survey in the chat now and um, please um, let us know what you thought of today's event and um, we'll be sending out a free giveaway. What's our free giveaway this time Joan? Sorry, I forgot to mention it. Ed, um, I've got a selection of edible flowers here so there's right. um, a bit of a pick and mix between nasturtium, calendula, borage, the four things that I was doing I've, I've already forgotten. That's brilliant, <laughs> exciting. So if you want if you want a chance to get some of the your hands on some of these plants to grow, um, please fill in uh, the survey and uh, we'll be delighted to post them out to you. Unfortunately, we can only post out in the UK. It's live plant material. Joan. Pam's got a question. Oh, she um, has. Hi, Pam. Yeah. Do you want to Hello. Me? Yeah, just a very quick one. And um, when you're talking about, you know, the dwarf variety of sunflowers. Yeah. Is there just a case of if I'm to Google dwarf bush variety of sunflowers, I'll get a decent... Yep. Um, are they all quite suitable? Are quite fancy, because normally, you know, like in garden magazines, the standard is they'll give you a Russian giant, any random sort of giant <laughs> sunflower. So I thought it might be a bit different to get a dwarf bush variety. That is a, a sunflower. A oh, fancy, sunflower. Sarah Raven. Mm -hmm. I think it's Little Leo is another... Um, bush variety, and mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm searching through my thing. I see it's here that I've sown to find the one the actual name. Okay. Um, just to show you, there's little Leo, and then there's something like Lolito. Okay. Uh, off the top of my head. Lolito. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's little Leo. Um, okay, Mr. Father Girls. Cool. Okay, so there's a few out there, yep. I've got about 20, in fact, this is all the ones that I'm kind of, I've got piles for to go today. I've got piles that maybe wait a couple of weeks because I'm in Aberdeenshire. <laughs> I've got piles for... <laughs> yeah, it's needs... all good fun, that's part Exactly, of you can't have enough seeds. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much, Pam. And thanks to everybody. We'll say bye just now. Take care. See you next bye. time. Bye.